for those of you. So love for you to continue interacting with our Fast Track team. Um, and do, if you haven't familiar with the Fast Track team, um, uh, please take a look at uh, what our team does for, uh, for our customers in the meantime. So to the topic today, why don't you kind of think of, of some of these numbers. We have many times in, in, in our um, uh, public communication, if you're working with Microsoft, you're working with your friends and partners and implementation teams, um, really love to go out there and talk about the magnitude of amount of features that we release. So what you're seeing on the screen here is actually 486 pages that are in our release plan for that MX365 for just the release week two, which is coming this October. There's also, in addition to that, 118 pages in the release plan for the Power Platform. Now, a lot of this really sounds exciting when you're a new customer or when you're a customer um, that could use uh, reinvigoration to understand how many features you have to, uh, uh, how our innovation goes. For existing customers of those of you who are operating on this platform, this might actually sound like pretty bad news or maybe even a daunting challenge because I think the kid just told me there's over 600 pages of content for me to go through. And I'm not sure I might even have time to address that. So with that, I potentially maybe even need to start contacting my friends in Microsoft or looking for, for ways um, to delay this kind of an update. Well, one of those things and worry is we want to put to rest and make sure that um, our customers and folks are not um, maybe, maybe distraught or discouraged by the amount of potential change that is potentially perceived that's coming to the platform. So this presentation and the visual uh, hands on that I'll give you showing you the actual uh, changes in the interface that your users will be uh, uh, realized when this update releases will be done because actually I have good news for you. There's actually very few and they're very specific features or changes um, that you need to actually test. We've clearly outlined what they are and we've actually been doing this for, for a couple seasons now. So actually we do this twice a year and you'll see that in just a minute, but we always give you a good clear notice of what they are, we'll give you an ability to see those changes and actually get hands on with those changes uh, several months before we actually go ahead and launch them into the environment for you. And for those of you that do all your homework a lot earlier, in fact, you can even go and actually apply those updates early. Now, some of these issues could be, you know, coming from the fact that, you know, there's maybe perceived mis misunderstanding of what is being updated and how does Microsoft update my software? You could maybe conveniently, maybe not even pay attention that you had an update in April that happened to you. Maybe you've just missed it. You're busy building your business, you're delivering value with our platform. Those things are seamless. And that's just a testament that how far we've evolved as a platform in terms of where we've been with our previous versions of our products several years ago to where we are in our consistent release cycle. So we'll clarify that. It also misunderstood, well, as a customer, oh, I, I hear updates, I know updates, and maybe I remember updates to my other large ERP or line of business applications. And those always required a ton of testing. And you know, my organization really values testing and quality. I might be worried now how much I need to test. And also, um, you know, we have thousands and thousands and thousands. Majority of our customers have already migrated and transitioned to our modern unified interface stack. For those of you that are still holding out and waiting for that very last minute, I encourage you, there's no time to wait uh, and you don't need to wait for the October release. In fact, as we'll show you today, uh, how you can enable those features early. So let's, let's actually get through a lot of this. Uh, first, by actually just addressing our release cycle and cadence. So for both Dynamics 365 and Power Platform, and both of those are, are, are intertwined together for Dynamics 365 customers, we have two releases a year. So the one right now that we're addressing is the, the, the 2020, which is the year, and then a release wave two. So we have two major releases. So we've asked our engineering, our product leaders, and we wanted to give you a clear commitment of twice a year, let's organize and instead of just seeding and dropping features all over the year, let's focus those updates in two times a year, make it very clear and simple for the folks to understand when we're updating software, when you should go out and look for new features, and also when if Microsoft is changing anything in the UI, 
adding, modifying, and in rare cases, removing things from you, uh, that you have a predictable time of year where you need to kind of pay attention to that. Also, the good news is everybody is on the same version. And for any changes, we provide early access to get your hands on to those types of changes. We've been very successful and very pleased with this operating effort that we've been running for several seasons here with our latest Dynamics 365 uh, product. As I said, everybody's running on the same version. So when does this happen, right? Well, first of all, why do we call this a wave? Let me just recap that. Is it because there's actually the beginning of the wave, right? We got April and October. This is when the changes hit, right? So if any changes or new kind of, I would say, let's just call them mandatory for simplicity. Any mandatory changes or features that happen to your users will happen predictably in either April or October. Now there's other times in that wave where some features, you know, take a lot of work and they take some time to ship, will show up. The good news is those types of features usually require that you actually go and configure and set something up. So that's good news. You actually don't have a lot of surprises between April and October when features come out. So we'll actually drill into that um, in a minute. So now we're in this kind of release wave two. We've just had some features coming out. Now you might be wondering yourself, whoa, whoa, whoa we're right here. <laughs> so let me actually ease your mind and show you exactly what's changing in your UI. Uh, I know you don't have time to read 600 pages of all of our new features, but let me help you focus in on just the changes. Additionally, you know, it doesn't, the update doesn't hit every of one of our regions at the same time. In fact, what you see here on our release plan schedule is that uh, depending on the country and the geography that you're in, it's going to mandate which part of October, I guess, which we can in October, you're going to get that update. So take a look at that and see what's applicable to you, because for some of our customers, you have maybe just a few weeks left. And for some of us, I have just a little bit more um, in plan. So what is actually changing? When you look at the release plan, and actually when I get out of slides, we'll go and actually take a look at this material uh, online. Now I mentioned the pages. I mentioned actually the pages that are parked if you went and downloaded the PDF version of it. And I'll show you how to use our web version of that experience for just simplifying uh, uh, what you need to get done. There's three types of features. And I've kind of just reclassified them myself just to make it a little bit even more simpler. We've got three types. Things that happen to end users automatically. So when you see a feature labeled with that, specific to what you're using in a product, this is the one to specifically to pay attention to. That's what I'd like to call a mandatory feature. Features in categories of B and C are things that are available for makers, right? For people who are uh, making the products or for people that are inside your organization or implementation teams that are lighting up that experience. And the other ones are for, for, for admin side. Now it's important to make sure that you know for your dynamics customers, you're really going to start taking a look at the features that are part of both Power Platform and Dynamics. So really, what we're talking about here, and I'm going to steal my own thunder here, is that we're not talking about 486 pages or 118 pages in the release plan that you might need to be aware of. Um, we're actually talking about, um, and I know that the numbers here are different. Actually, 26 specific features in Dynamics. And 26 even sounds large, but that's if you're literally using all of our, literally all of our Dynamics 365 products and Dynamics 365 for apps uh, uh, scenarios, and only seven features in the Power Platform that are part of those mandatory category. So that's actually not so bad. And even that 26, I'll tell you when we'll take a look at the release plan in just a minute, actually gets even smaller depending on your specific use case of what you're doing with Dynamics. So we're gonna come back to slides because we're gonna wanna see what are we actually talking about here. So I'm gonna switch back to my desktop. So first of all, just going back to that advertisement, Dynamics 365 Fast Track Tech Talks. We have plenty of them. We're always releasing new content and best practices. Uh, in material here that's additive to our customers. So take a look at that, uh, uh, that link that we provided and this recording of this presentation, if you like it, will go up here as a recorded content for you to be able to share and link and repeat any time. Okay, so let's look specifically at these release plans online. So let's make sure this is running. Okay, so we have two pages to take a look at. We're going to take a look at the dynamics page first and 
usually when you're going to you're going to go to the link, you're going to see this and most folks download the actual PDF, maybe for reading and because everybody loves to brag how many new features there are. We want you to be excited, but specifically right now I've called your attention to the mandatory features. Let's take a look at that because that's where we do UI changes. So just to get because UI changes that happen mandatory to your users are very important for you to be addressed. In most organizations, a change to, to a button or a feature or something shifting on the screen or UI changing is a big deal event, and we understand that. That's why we go out and actually communicate this plan early to you. And this release plan was released. Um, um, we keep updating it, so that's why it says January. But this plan here, in fact, there's a change history here available. So if you ever looked at the plan and said, hey, something was missing or maybe changed, we actually do run the change history because we understand that that could be preserved. Now, this is a very short list things that even changed in the plan uh, since we provided, but there's some dates that were added that were not previously here, but we released this all the way in July. Now, the important page here to take a look at is early access features. So early access features are actually our ability. So we know that when we enable a feature automatically, we have to give it to you early. What we actually do is we finish it early. So here's the features to take a look. In the Dynamics 365 early, access features list, you see that this lists all of the Dynamics products. Now, the context for this presentation is all of Dynamics 365 apps, and these are on the traditional CRM side for me, so we're really only going to be looking at these four blocks. Right, again, there's a call out here to make sure you, you remember that when you're using Unified Interface and Power Automate out of Power Platform, you want to take a look at that release plan as well, and we'll take a look at that in a minute. So first, let's start with marketing. Now, this is referring specifically to our Dynamics 365 Premium Marketing product. So if you haven't purchased, licensed, or deployed our Dynamics 365 Marketing product, this is not for you. If you have, definitely take a look at these three features. What you're going to see here uh, is that you have three of these features that are available. You see that they're end user automatic, which means they're mandatory. You see that they have the early access, and you see when they become generally available. We'll go back and tell you what the how to kind of read those monikers uh, again, but basically we've summarized that. For sales, well, this is already starting to look good. Okay, so for sales, uh, we have four features that are available for, for our users that are using sales. Now, some of these features you'll notice that actually are available if you've created a custom app module or combined features within the two, those kids actually kind of bleed into use cases. So I would say for, uh, for customers that are not using our premium product, if you're using uh, you know, um, our system for sales or customer service, you probably want to take a look at both sales and customer service at the very least. So we have uh, several features for customer service. I think there's about eight if I'm doing my counting uh, here correct. And there's about a dozen for field service. Now, once again, if you're not using field service, some of the features don't take this application. There's a lot of good mention here. And then we get to finance. So here we go. In just two minutes, we went from an unsurmountable volume of you know 500 400 pages to frankly what we're looking at here four eight so there's you can you just told me there's 12 features in dynamics that i must pay attention to yes this is for you as an operator of your system right what is changing these 12 things now specifically for sales for example if you're new and just started sales and you really haven't involved into using our forecasting capability maybe some of those forecasting features or simplification in those areas wouldn't have been applied to. So you want to actually even then click into these features and take a look at how what this feature is and how that applies to you. But this is your test surface. That's pretty good. Now in customer service, you're going to take a look at uh, the features as well because there's many times features, for example, here like changes to the timeline that will very much apply to you, even if you're just using the sales module because the timeline is a control that's shared. Let's take a look at the Power Platform release plan. Same thing here. Obviously, you can go to the root page, download the document if you want to uh, use that on the reader. We got the full change history, what we're changing, but the page to pay attention to is early access feature. Well, let's take a look at that because Nikita, you said this is where the UI changes are that are platform wide. We have five changes here for you. So for Power Apps, we have five changes. There's a lot of them that speak to the mobile application. One of them actually mentions the fact that if you haven't uh, haven't noticed, we are unifying everything onto the unified interface. There's no more web client going forward, just as a reminder. So let's not even count that. We've got four features to take a look at. 
Um, and those four features are ability to do emails in, in mobile application. Well, finally, that's great. We didn't have that, so we now have that. So that's not really a change. Um, address key gaps in the chart customization. I'll tell you that if you had charts that were customized and weren't showing up great before, uh, better chance of them working better now. That's really all that means. Okay, so that's not really a change. There's some change in the header. Okay, that sounds, sounds important. We'll actually show you this. Okay, that's the reminder. And then UX changes of how some things look in the mobile experience. Well, that's not so bad. Let's take a look at Power Automate. And then the Power Automate release here. The, the, you know, Power Automate is our workflow and business kind of uh, automation system. So it really runs a lot of the time behind the scenes. So UI changes here are pretty rare. Uh, and these specifically talk to UI flows, which is our RPA, robotic process automation specific features. Okay, so we're five minutes into looking at this plan and we're really finding out that, you know, frankly, if you're a customer that's not using field service, not using a premium marketing product, there's really about a dozen places or less to take a look at um, in terms of what's changing. So let's actually take a look. So here I have an application that you might have running today, right? This is today's version of the application. And I wanna show you tomorrow's version of the application. Now this is really hard to see. If I just went back and forth like this on the full screen, it'd be really hard for you to be able to quickly see what has changed in what I've shown you. So what I wanna do is actually give you a little bit of a tip how you yourself can experience it. You're gonna see it firsthand how I'm showing this to you. Uh, but this is also just kind of take it away because probably you're going to be the one breaking the news that, um, hey, there's actually a few by changes twice a year at Microsoft. I've just learned this. Uh, but please don't run out of the room and panic. Everything is fine. Let me show you the impact of those changes in our application. That's what I want to arm you with is a little bit of uh, guidance and tips. So I want to use the power of Windows and actually show you that you can compare and contrast things on two sides of the screen. So I'm going to get to slides of how to set this up and kind of go do and the, and the executive plan to get this installed. But let me just show you first what's in the changes. So don't worry, I'll show you how to get this installed in your environment. So Nikita, the, you said this is the new one. So what I do is I have my Windows key on my keyboard and my and my and my arrows right on my keyboard as well. And I can hold down the Windows key and go right. And this presents me a capability to select what's on the left side of my screen. And I'm going to select another window. So this is just a quick tip of being able to show two screens on the side. Now you can do this with a mouse if you're more of a mouse person and just move your window to the side and it's going to snap. It's called Windows Snap Mode. It's available uh, uh, to all of our customers. So if you're in modern version of Windows, I think we've had this for a really long time. Just hold down the Windows key and use your uh, Window, uh, use your left, right, and you can use up to man maximize. I love this, I use this every day. But I found that this is actually a, a really nice way of being able to show two things at a time. So what you're gonna do, and I'll show you exactly a plan is, we recommend taking an instance, take like your test or your dev instance, and this is where you're today as is. Go make a copy of that, which is what I'm showing on the right, and go ahead and enable those features, right? And we have this, what's called early access, I told you. When we change your eye, we know, we know you want to try that on hands-on and know and understand the impact to your users. So we actually give you an ability to turn that on early. And we had this available for about a month and a half at this point or so. So I've done that here. Um, and, what it, the, and I actually want to demonstrate why it's so important to have a copy um, later. So, but at this point, it's still pretty hard to tell the difference of what's, of what's new. Well, I'm going to go and break down and actually show you one by one. I'm going to start on top right. There's a slight change here. My name is Nikita Polikov, so you see NP available here. Pretty much a negligible change. Now, you see that this is slightly different than what this looks like if I'm, mac uh, if I'm maximized. There's a few more controls and buttons. That hasn't changed. This is just our overflow capability. It's doing what it's supposed to do here just fine. I'm going to go back and actually minimize this again. Okay, so that's still fine. One of the things that's changing here is that if I go and start navigating with my experience, okay, really don't see a lot of changes here so far. This is why it's so important to have the same system. 
Now here, sometimes when I'm doing this panning, you see things get off alignment and that's okay. You can just realign them back and forth because you, what you want to show and what I want to show to you is that things haven't dramatically changed. In fact, maybe some of you are sharp eyed. You're noticing some things here in the header. I'm going to get to them in just a minute, but my system is here. My system is operational. The only challenge that I might have is if you just go and let's say set up a trial or you know take one of your old sandboxes you haven't updated and you show this side by side to somebody, what is the first thing a business user is going to notice or a stakeholder is going to notice? There's a difference in data, so you don't want to be in a situation where you're showing you know two different systems really uh, because it might actually take away some of that suspension of this belief. You might start worrying about, well, did it change business logic or my filtering? You don't want to be in this situation where I actually have a system that has two different sets of sample data. This is going to start getting a user really worried about uh, maybe potential other changes or breaking the business logic or something else happening under the covers. I assure you it's not. So you want to make sure that it, this is actually not how I'm showing you, because as you can see, this might have challenges. Even in my forms, you know, the application on the left side, I have financial service accelerator installed. I have field service installed. And then the system on the right, I don't have any of that. So it's really kind of clashing and maybe alarming the user. Uh, but so let's get back to showing you the differences. I want to just quickly click through this just to settle some minds here. So let's say we start our application from scratch, right? What is going to be different for our users? Well, first, you see that there's a, a little bit of a difference. Let's go all the way left to right, right? So we don't have any changes here. We do seem to have a change here. First of all, this first logo, and this is um, uh, still available for me to customize. I even have a system here that has a custom logo. It is fine. Your custom logo, your theme carries over just fine. Trust me. Now, if I have that system, um, I'm no longer able to kind of click on this logo to go to the home page. Well, that's because the home page button is just less than an inch on my screen away from here. So you can always go to home. And when you click this, this just went to the home page of that application. So that was just removing some of the redundancy of, of clicks. Next, you're going to see that there was a Chevron here for the drop down experience. That's to switch applications. Now I don't have that here. Now I'm starting to worry. Well, don't worry. Sales Hub, let's click on that. What did this do? Well, this was just to go back home. So both of these did the same thing. On the right side here, this doesn't work anymore, but that gets me home. So I'm good here. What if I click on Sales Hub? Aha, uh -huh. this is my application list. Now, again, this is where you don't want to show two different apps to a different environment because just like you, you're looking at, you're saying, hey, these two are not the same. Um, they are exactly the same, in fact. What we're providing you is a better visual full screen experience of seeing your applications that are available to you. Again, I'm logged in as an administrator, so I'm seeing many applications that our users actually wouldn't see, or maybe more applications uh, that, uh, that are shared to my user. In fact, if you're seeing this for the first time, one of the things that we offer now is an ability to, to have multiple apps, right? running within Dynamics so you can switch through. So if you switch applications as a user, often, your users need to know. If your users haven't even known that they had applications to switch to, and they had one app module that was shared specifically to them, this does not impact them at all because they're not going to actually be going through this set of changes or experiencing that um, uh, together. Okay. So, what's the next change? Well, I'm seeing this collection of things, and this is kind of you know what's sometimes called as a breadcrumb. You see an ability. So, so let's go and navigate deep to, let's say, an account. Let's see what this experience looks like in before and on the right after. I'm clearly seeing that we've removed the breadcrumb experience from um, the newer version. Oops, click on something. Um, we experience, uh, uh, removed it on the new version. One of the reasons um, we removed it is that there's a new capability here coming um, that is going to be optional for you to turn on that's going to make better use of the screen real estate. You said better screen real estate use than a breadcrumb. You could, I really love using my breadcrumb. OK, well, let's go through some use cases. You're using the breadcrumb if you went to an account record to go back to accounts. How do you do that here? And I'm going to collapse the menu just to give myself a little bit more space. Right? To go back to my list of accounts, I actually now have a back button. That's something some of you might have noticed this whole time is that let's go from the beginning 
there's now a back button on my primary command bar that's available to me at all the times. So, that, so if I go to accounts, go here, if I just needed to go back to my dashboard, now here, this worked because that's the default experience. If I came to a list of accounts from somewhere else, this breadcrumb actually didn't help me. So let me show you another example where the breadcrumb really wouldn't help you much. Let's say we're in accounts and we go specifically to look at a contact on that account. Let's scroll down and let's go to our primary contact in this, Renee. And on the right side, I'm gonna go to Renee. Now you see that my breadcrumb here changed from accounts, a datum, now to context and Renee. So if I needed to go back to a datum, I know it's right here, but the ribbon, the, the you know, the breadcrumb here didn't help me. The back button here is smart. Now, in fact, the back button does exactly what the back button in the browser does. It's just allowing the user to have that confidence that uh, you can always go back. And in fact, if I've done a search, right, and I have less records to look through, my back button would respect that and I come back to my search. So that's pretty good. That's all available here. So that's a change, but what's that feature Nikita talked about that might use better real estate here? Now that feature is not mandatory. The feature is an addition of an improved global search experience that's coming. Now, there's a tip, right? How do you know that it's not, you know, uh, when is it coming? You're gonna go to the release plan, looking at this feature, it's in the Power Apps, it's in the apps, Improved global search experience. We didn't see it in the list of early access because it's not mandatory. Okay, so this is a feature I have to, I have a choice to turn on. Okay, excellent. It's going to be available in October. Okay, that's pretty good. That's why it's not available early because it's not mandatory. Uh, it's not something we're exploring, in, so it's not in public preview view. It's going to be ready, ship ready to use in October. Okay, and it's what describes the feature. But what we're basically doing is we're adding a search bar in that in that space. So in fact, cleaning up that space was actually important for us um, for uh, introduction of this feature uh, coming along. So we're gonna allow our customers starting in October. So after this release uh, is enabled, look for a settings feature uh, that will be available for you to deploy this capability in your environment. Okay, so next we're gonna see this experience. When I searched in this list, so at this point, let me actually just go uh, um, on the right side. When I searched in this experience and I went into the record, I also see that there is another change. So let me go to a list of accounts here and just repeat from the same. I went and searched for all of my A's and I went and clicked into it. There's another change here. Well, there was a button here that, you know, maybe you didn't know what it meant. Here it looks like it's gone and there's another button. In fact, it's the same button, we just changed the icon. So we improved this coverability of what's called Record Set Navigator. Now, both of these windows are small right now. And because we know it doesn't have a, we don't have a lot of screen real estate between these, um, we're actually gonna overlay this feature and not take up room. If you had more screen real estate, so just like before, you actually see that your Record Set Navigator pans out. So if you had the menu open, your record set navigator can come in and out. And if you were in a new version as well, same thing. If you had your menu open and we had enough horizontal real estate, this record set navigator came out. Well, Nikita, what does this record set navigator even do? Well, remember, I searched for the, the, the letter A in my list of accounts um, and I got this result set. So if I ever needed to maybe look for a set of records, and quickly go through that list of records, I can use my record set navigator to quickly doing so without having to go back to the list. Go back to the list. See, the back button does exactly what it's supposed to do. Go back to the list and search, right, and go to another record. I can just open the record set navigator and come in. There's many great use cases of that. Let's say you got a dashboard and you got my list of accounts there. You can open the very first list of accounts and just pop in the record set navigator and navigate through. We've had this feature for a while. We just made it a little bit more discoverable by adding it a little maybe better and more interesting icon, whereas before it was ju uh, just like this, uh, so it's available. Okay, so that's, you know, it is a change. It's a small change, but I wanted to mention it. Okay, so now let's take a look at um, one of the features that I actually wanna bring up that is um, uh, changed now in the timeline control. Now the timeline control is listed in customer in Dynamics 365 
uh, for service, right? So in the customer service module, but you know you're using the timeline control on account, on contact, on opportunity, on lead. This is universal. So let's take a look at um, what that looks like. So we're going to go and open the same record. Again, I just keep showing you in my demo specifically how important it is to have the same data uh, to, to suspend that disbelief that they're the same. So what are the changes here for the timeline? The changes for the timeline are, um, I see a new button here. I see that I have a Chevron to expand. Um, okay, so let's take, let's break this out. So let's say I have an email here. You, you might know that you need to click on the email to expand it and see its content and see formatting. And you can still do that here on the right. Um, you know, the one on the left doesn't have an image, so you got an extra item here to, to display an image. Okay. If I had an attachment, we display attachments here. So you can actually see really quickly by scanning this list that there is an attachment on an email. So that's one improvement. Also, we're giving a hint to the user with the Chevron that you are to expand that item and you can collapse that item. So just a little bit more visual hints to the user. So what was this button on top? Expand all records. Okay, now I can actually go ahead and expand all my records instead of having to click each one of the items. That's pretty neat. Okay, so just very small usability change. So we're like 10 minutes into the demo. I'm not seeing earth shattering UI changes, Nikita. And that's kind of the point. We make evolutionary changes and improvements. But we know sometimes, and specifically in some organizations, it's really, really important to know every time there's a button added, every time there's a major change, there's a new button here, there's new buttons in the menu, that you're, you're prepared to understand the changes. That's why we publish it early, give you the ability to apply this hands-on, and provide an ability for you to turn this on. OK, so here's, here's one other change. Um, we've added an ability for you. Um, as you know, we now have formatting in our notes. We now can do inline images in notes. That's really great. So that's one of the changes that's um, also noted in the timeline. Now I want to actually change tracks. I want to show you a combination of what you might have missed as a change and an improvement to an email experience. Now you can go to the app module settings uh, for the sales. Up and go to the app settings and turn this on. Um, there's a documentation link for this that's linked out of the release notes for this. There's a new email experience. When you're in the timeline specifically and you want to create an email, you will now have an ability to compose that email superimposed right on top of the screen. And you're saying, what's the benefit of that? Okay, okay, I see minimize, I see maximize, so I can get more full screen, I see that I can close this. OK, this is not too dramatic. Uh, well, some of the improvements to the email are um, insert knowledge article. That could be useful. Insert templates, convert this email to a template. OK, that's useful. Insert a signature. Hmm, OK, well, one of the things here that you might notice is, uh, especially if you're passionate about email and dynamics, is my signature has an image. So now we have an ability for you to easily add images to your signatures. If I imported, inserted a template, I'm going to select a template for uh, for an account. My template is going to have an image. So we introduced the capability to easier allow you to introduce imagery in your template without having to find out how to upload it or go look at a bunch of blogs and ways to uh, to do this. We made it very easy for you to be able to do that. OK, that's that's offering experience. Why is this thing floating, Nikita? Well, one of the reasons why we believe, and this is an option for you to turn off and use, um, is that you can navigate. So if I'm looking at a datum and I'm writing them a reconnect email, I want to go on potentially and, uh, okay, you know what? I can't see my contact. Let me minimize. The email is still here. I'm still writing it. I'm going to go to the primary contact of Renee to look up something I need about Renee or the last case. I know Renee had this opportunity. Now I'm able to navigate my experience, okay? and still continue writing this email. So I can say, you know, dear eDatum, Renee, right? And then I can mention something specific out about our interaction and notes or something like that while writing that email. And this is the power of that, or I can just go completely to home and go look at my dashboard, do something else, and I can finish and save that email later or go save and send it from here. So it's an optional experience. It's pretty nice um, to be able to do that um, and, um, Hopefully you enjoy that and uh, uh, take advantage of it. 
The mandatory part of features includes the ability to easier manage and create templates. What that means is uh, you do have to switch your app modules here, but when you get to the service module, um, there's email template and signature templates. They work on both of the applications. So if we go now to a signature template, we get a modern editor. We're not jumping back to uh, an older admin experience to manage this or going in personal settings. Um, and as you can see, I've got in my ribbon here, I've got an image button. I can quickly go where before you have to kind of finagle your way and figure out how to host an image. You can just go and browse and provide an inline image from your computer. That's pretty nice and be able to insert it, format it, whatever you need to do right here within this experience, save this template. And now this is ready to go for me as a signature. Now email templates, as you know, one of the best uh, things about email templates is that you actually have dynamic data as part of the template. And we bring that capability to the modern unified interface with this release. So here, as you can see, I already showed you the image. Similarly, this works the same, but also we now introduce a capability, obviously that is important and sold to the email templates is to insert dynamic text. Insert dynamic text experience is modern as well. You've got an ability to provide default text. You see the entities that are related and be able to provide and navigate that experience in a more meaningful, modern way. So that's great. So we went over um, the email, the new email experience. You can turn that on and turn that off, which is the email experience from Timeline, which allows that superimposed way. The email template creation and email signature creation is available there. There's one more change that's available in our system uh, that your user are gonna see. And that change, as we talked about, it's even an introduction of a new feature or a new button. We have to tell you uh, when that happens. When we have an experience here, when we see a new button appear um, to, to you as a user, um, we want to make sure that you're uh, prepared for that. So if we go to our account, I'm on the new one here, and I open an account, there's export to PDF. Now, without reading, you might assume that if I click this, this is going to export this page to a PDF. It's better. What this is allowing you to do is take one of the document templates that you have for this record type here, it's account summary, First of all, be able to see the preview of that template and be able to do three different things distinctly with them. You can download it to your computer or a mobile device if you're accessing this in a mobile device. You can email it, which means you can actually attach it to an email, or you can save it to Dynamics, which will take this PDF. Uh, if you'll take this document, convert it to a PDF, and attach it as a note to this very record that you're on. So it's a new button. It just appears here. Um, we wanted to just make sure that we note it in the release plan to so use an administrator, maker, or owner of an implementation are aware um, that this capability exists. So this is where combining it with that email experience um, is, uh, is, is fantastic because now you're able to see that you've added it to an email as an attachment where the final um, piece of what's changing I wanted to show you is that our attachments are easier than ever to see on an email. You see that we've added this account summary uh, attachment to this email. We see the size of this um, and we're able to continue writing that email. We can close this, minimize this, and continue on with our day. So that's really wrapping it up. I said there's, there's basically about a dozen features here that are part of it. Now I didn't get into changes in service or changes specifically to forecasting capability. Uh, please go ahead and do discover those on your own time in your system. So let's get back to the slides and talk about how to turn this on, some timelines and things like that. But before I do, I wanna leave you with one little bonus thing. So when we switch applications, you might notice that I had a second customer service application. This customer service application, while it might feel like it's part of early access or something that's showing up, it's not shared with the rest of your users. You can go to manage roles and check. This is something we're starting in preview uh, since August. It's available to you to experience now. It is going to be GA, which means generally available, ready to use in production, and ready to allow your users to see um, in production since it's starting in October. The way to use this application, I want to give you a quick tip here, is that this is kind of similar to an omni-channel experience, but let's say your, your, your service workers are always working on multiple things and who doesn't multitask, right? Well, okay, this is different, Nikita, but where is my menu? I, I know I customized my customer service app. There's no menu. I don't see cases. I don't see articles. I do see this. Okay, and, and I'll tell you that you can customize this. Okay, so I go to my just traditional list of cases. 
Okay. Okay. So this is just unified interface. I'm really doing much. Let me try, you know, is there like opening? So if I hold down the control button on my keyboard and open a new tab, now I can see a new case. Okay. This is, this is interesting. This is, feels just wasted. Why is this here, Nikita? Okay. Well, if you hold down shift key on your keyboard and open a record, hold down the shift key, come on, hold down your shift key on the record, you will start a new session. The important thing is, okay, so now I have my home. So let's say this is my dashboard. I'm working on the case and, um, you know, a customer walks in, calls in, or I got to do something different, right? So I'm going to work a case here using my tabs, but now I have this specific record. In fact, if I wanted to, and it's not limited to the, just that record itself, I can go and even open an account. So I can just have a tab specific to an account. We want to see how you're exploring this as customers and hear from you. So just as I said, as a bonus, this is not a mandatory feature. This is a feature that's available as preview. This app module for customer service workspace is available for you. We didn't share it with all of you users by default. We're not gonna do something like that. We only shared it with you as a maker and administrator or customizer for you to experience. If you need to, you can obviously share this. You can go to app module designer and customize what shows up in this menu. I've told you the tip, hold down the control button to open the new a record in a new tab and then click on it. And then if you wanna open a new session, right? On the left side here, you can go ahead and hold down shift and now you can open a new session and continue that. This allows me to multitask and work in a couple cases. Uh, check this out. This might, uh, this might introduce some opportunity for you to improve your workflow. All right, let's get back to slides, unfortunately, um, and talk about, well, how do I turn this on? So first of all, um, I want to give you a couple, uh, just a screenshot of this so it's even easier than ever um, to, to know what the changes are. To introduce the new back button would be the record set navigator easier than ever to discover. There's another set of mobile changes. Now, these are um, something that you have to load up the mobile application for. So I didn't have the time to, um, to bring up my uh, uh, mobile sharing experience. It's really hard to show it side by side. So let's talk about the changes in the mobile application. The mobile application we're talking about here is the Dynamics 365 mobile application. Um, as you might know and discover that you can actually open your Dynamics environments or model-driven applications now in the Power App application. So do as well check that out, uh, especially if you're using multiple app, uh, Power Apps at the same time. Model-driven apps like Dynamics are uh, uh, available in the Power Apps. But if you're using Dynamics 365 uh, application and, and your users in the field, sellers or customer service or whatever you're doing with, the, with Dynamics, are in the field, they will see a change in the mobile application. So let's quickly go over that side by side here in the slides. As a quick change in where search and quick create is, before it was really buried here in one of the sub menus. It's really easy to see here now in the top right, you see the search and you see the quick create menu. Um, there's a lot of kind of gesture and swiping capability that's introduced. The menus look modern, easier to hit. It's just a joy to navigate. Uh, it feels like, uh, you know, just kind of what you expect from consumer apps. You see that kind of seasonal update. It's all modern. It's all very much at home with uh, how your applications um, navigate. The new command bar enhancements, that's basically what, you know, the ribbon, um, uh, if you're a customizer, what we refer to, moved from the top, where it was kind of hard to reach to hit that save button. You always had to go to the overflow, obviously, to see more. Now it's on the bottom, easier than ever to reach. Um, you know, updated easier to see icons. You hit on more, you're going to get that pop up with the rest of those items. Here's our awesome create or email as PDF feature that we talked about from UI. See a lot of these features and capabilities are going uh, and available to you uh, across all of your uh, interfaces of uh, Unified Interface. The navigation, simplified, improved, cleaner, fresher, still my navigation. We don't change what you put in it, we just change how we present it. Um, in the lists, just a little bit of a simplification. Again, we move that command bar um, uh, easier for you to discoverability. So first few of those things like search or others um, are available there within the list. Um, there's, you know, again, that command bar is on the form. It's one of the things you want to use on the form, right? So that create you create PDF or email, uh, you know, an account snapshot while I'm facing uh, a customer doing it right from my mobile device is easier than ever because it's easy for me to reach that button and I've got that create. Uh, PDF capability. Okay. As we talked about, finally, we bring the email capability to 
your mobile device because unified interface uh, is available on mobile. Well, let's recap when all these things happen, right? Let's get back to the well, release notes. We talked about there's three dates on every feature, right? Preview, early access, and general availability. So public preview, like if you're seeing the date for that, that means when it's ready for you to explore, right? Task, but it's not production ready for sure. Early access, that's reserved for all of our mandatory features because we need to finish that early. Uh, and general availability is when it's ready. So if you kind of combine those two, right? You're looking at something like this, right? That PDF button we talked about in my demo, it's end user automatic, which means it's just gonna show up. Uh, you don't do anything. It's just gonna show up for you in October. And we give it to you as early as October, August as part of our early access. Right. This early access, you know, kind of a lot of misnomers about it. Um, because we, you know, have mandatory features, we finish them early. We finish them early to give to you as a customer to apply in your test environment, test, you know, do any change management that you might need to do for your users. But if you are ready and you don't have any uh, impact to your implementation, you're ready with your training campaign, or you're rolling out unified interface to all of your users and you don't want to come back to them just a few weeks later saying, hey, by the way, really quick, um, there's a change in the menu. You can actually apply this today, right, to your environment. We're confident about these features. We finish them early um, and, and, and available to you. So we have that in the doc so you feel safe that it's available for you to deploy to production. Just uh, make sure you actually test this. And here are the two links to actually go ahead and read these features and capabilities. How to actually apply this early access early, right? There's actually two things that happen when you apply this um, uh, update early is there's feature control bits that kind of light up a lot of this new UI capability. But also if we reduce new capabilities and add new controls, uh, we need to ship them as part of our native solutions. You can't undo this. That's why we really ask you to take the time to test this in a, in a parallel environment. So what does that look like? Well, take a test environment of your choice, enable early access, test the validation, use that neat method that I showed you to check it side by side, right? Um, you can capture any changes or training needs to your customers. You can apply, right? So you can decide your schedule. You know now with the release schedule of when that's gonna get applied for you. Uh, there's nothing extra or special that gets applied as part of that weekly update. It's just a regular weekly update we just turn on that early access mode for you, which just turns on those feature control bits and improvements for the mandatory features. As simple as that, let's just take a look at it one more time just for redundancy sake, what that looks like. Uh, traditionally, uh, I'm well aware that we're like totally here at this point, but let's say um, we were in July, when we published this release plan that we looked at today, um, in early August, we allowed you to enable this in early access in your sandboxes and allow you to check what's happening. If you find any issues ever in early access, I told you we finish it early and we're confident about it, but if there are changes or issues, hey, raise your hand, go to Microsoft support. We'll help you try it if that's you, us, um, and, uh, and get you clarity on that. And then um, obviously, you know, you're gonna wanna do uh, potentially a little bit of change transmit, or at least even just a leaflet in your newsletter to your uh, audience of users of Dynamics saying, hey, by the way, if you're, especially like, for example, let's say you're an organization that uses multiple applications, you definitely wanna know uh, and be able to switch apps here um, um, is changing. You wanna maybe put that in that newsletter uh, saying, hey, you know, we're releasing Dynamics. So for example, if, uh, if you haven't looked at Apps for Outlook, uh, I encourage you to take a look at App for Outlook. Maybe as part of your announcement of App for Outlook, you can kind of slide in the CUI change as well. So as I said, because early access can be enabled at your own pace all the way up until when we do it for you in October, um, you can kind of actually play that into other releases or announcements um, uh, as convenient to you as possible. Um, I know some customers say, hey, I kind of really hate this weekend work. Um, can we turn this on like on Thursday? We'll get the users in there on Friday. We'll know if we need to go do something on, on over the weekend if there's any issues. Um, but this shouldn't be something like uh, so unpredictable that you do it on production. Um, if you turn this on, on on Thursday, get your users in there on Friday. Everybody's confident. Everybody has a good weekend. So again, uh, you can turn this on yourself. So again, I wanted to recap where we are in terms of the release schedule here uh, for the mandatory update. So the features that I showed you, right, those 26 features, if you're completely, you know, wall-to-wall, -wall, you know, marketing, sales service, field service, um, 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 power platform here with using your UI flows, 
you, you've got the 26 plus uh, seven uh, features to explore. Uh, if you'd like to a deeper deep dive on, you know, early access, how do I apply it? You know, what should I be testing? Nikita, you just said there's weekly updates. Uh, I was not aware that that was happening. Um, take a look at this session. There's a session at, uh, at Ignite, not, not this one coming up, uh, but Ignite from last year, uh, where myself and my colleague Karina have recorded for you. So that's uh, uh, still out there on YouTube. It's only 20 minutes, uh, really quick. But for those of you, or if you're a kind of decision maker saying, hey, I need to send my folks and how do I install this Nikita again? Um, take a look at this dedicated session related specifically about as a dynamics operator and owner, what do I need to test and how do I apply these updates? Um, there's nothing changed since then. Um, we're, we're operating in this method uh, for some time. So at this point, really, I wanted to remind you of the Dynamics 365 Fast Track Talk Talk series. Um, this session um, and others are posted uh, in our gallery. Uh, it'll probably take us a little bit of time to get this one wrapped up and get it posted. But take a look meantime uh, today what's available in that um, content. So I wanted to get to a couple of my peers and see if we had any questions or call out any prominent things that uh, folks might have called out. But at this point, I really wanted to, on behalf of FastTrack and Microsoft, thank you for being a customer. Uh, thank you for taking the time to learn about these UI changes. Hopefully, I know it might have been uh, somewhat anticlimactic for you, but I wanted to explain to you some of the changes in the UI uh, and make sure you're ready um, and had an example plan uh, to give and apply this in your environment, get your users ready, provide that confidence. So let me take a look really quickly through the, through the notes uh, here on what was asked during the session, and we can uh, maybe call out any important uh, um, aspects as well that we see here. So there are some roadmap questions around customer service workspace that I showed in preview. If that's replacing unified service task, I always said time and time again, um, you know, if we announce deprecations, there's actually a deprecation page. Uh, there's uh, at this time not a plan. USD has a specific purpose, right, for unified service task for application unification that requires the desktop capability. While we're providing omni-channel capability on the web, right, for interacting with chat agents and virtual uh, chat and that kind of a um, uh, VoIP and all those things together. This new customer service workspace is allowing you a taste of that without maybe getting in the omni-channel bandwagon yet, but either one of those existing um, uh, is a signal uh, of any changes in their unified service desk strategy at this time. And yes, uh, export to PDF. It requires your templates. The reason why my environment had account summary, account summary is one of our out of the box document templates that's created for an account. If you had your own document templates on an account, it's only the ones that it shows. So in fact, you can remove account summary. It's a, you know, just an example of what could be done uh, in that way as well. Um, there was a question around, uh, there was a save and close button on the email. Um, very important for the email, right? When you do save and close, uh, you're just saving the draft. You do want to make sure you actually send the email and that has the specific send button uh, on that email. Um, and stuff, uh, sure. Yeah, there are a couple of these kind of service and sales features that you can get into. Uh, just didn't have as much time. Um, you know, getting some, some feedback and some of the changes. Uh, we do have great improvements in the way that our grids filter um, and have and have records for lookup. And then I mentioned anything else here that's available more kind of technical questions. Okay, so one of the things to, to kind of do take a mention is that uh, if you are using our um, older Outlook com um, add-in, uh, please make sure that you're looking at a modern Dynamics 365 app for Outlook application. We have a great playbook available for you uh, for migrating to this um, uh, new application um, as well. One of the mentions here also mentioned that make sure to take a look also at the technical um, uh, deprecations and changes. Um, that is a place where we, for those of you that are writing code and SDK changes, right? We're not changing versions or major platform versions uh, twice a year. Um, you know, when we do, uh, we do take an announcement, there is usually a good amount of grace period to take advantage of some of the uh, 
uh, API or SDK changes. So make sure your technical folks are taking taking a look at our um, uh, uh, deprecations and changes page on the SDK. I think with that, I don't have any other questions of any of my peers here on the, um, on the line that were helping out with questions of anything else that was brought up um, offline or any other feedback. Um, we can we can chat about that. Otherwise, again, I thank you for your time. We'll, we'll, we'll stick around for just a few minutes uh, if you got any few questions remaining that uh, we're answering on chat. Nikita, on, on, on the product picker, is there something that we can share for reading? Um, I, don't know. I, I don't have it configured here um, that I'm prepared to present. Um, We we'll try and share something afterwards. Thanks, Max. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Hopefully, this was exciting. Hope you're in, in, in encouraged to go ahead and try this in your system. Um, um, I will say, you know, obviously, communicate and contact your um, IT, you know, side of the of the house if you need help with, you know, copying an instance and deploying it. Uh, and uh, in enabling early access. All of this is documented um, and, and ready for you. Now, if you run into challenges, Microsoft support is here to um, come take a look at that and give you an opinion saying, hey, is this a regression on our end? You know, is this a bleep in the service? Or is this something you need to go and fix? Um, we're really good about that triage with you. Um, and uh, we, we 